Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagle, and this week we're talking about natural sunscreens. Anna writes, I've been seeing articles about making your own sunscreens from plant oils, but are these really enough to protect my skin from UV damage? And what about supplements that are supposed to act as internal sunscreen? Thanks to extensive messaging campaigns from the American Academy of Dermatology and lots of others, most of us are well aware of the dangers of UV radiation. Unprotected exposure to the sun's rays can lead to potentially lethal skin cancers, as well as accelerated skin aging. But before I dig into Anna's question about skin protection, let me take this opportunity to dispel a couple of dangerous skin cancer myths. Skin cancer does not just affect fair-skinned people. People of all skin colors can get skin cancer, and skin cancers in Black and Hispanic people are more likely to go undiagnosed until they're in a much later stage when treatment is more difficult. Another common misperception is that skin cancers only form on areas of the body that are exposed to sunlight. When checking your skin for suspicious moles or spots, be sure to also check the soles of your feet and other areas of the body that are typically covered because they can be affected. And finally, if you do find a suspicious mole, you shouldn't wait until your next annual physical to get it checked out. Melanoma, which is the most deadly form of skin cancer, can become life-threatening in as little as six weeks. Now, covering your skin with clothing or shading your face with a hat can offer protection from the sun's rays. But for skin that's regularly exposed to the sky, diligent application of sunscreen is going to be the best protection. But recent studies have raised concerns about the chemical sunscreens that are most widely used in commercial sunscreen products. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2020 found that the chemicals found in these products, namely avobenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylene, homosalate, octosalate, and octanoxate, are absorbed into the body when you apply them to your skin. And they found that after three weeks of daily sunscreen use, these compounds could be detected in the blood of the subjects. Although we don't know for sure what the consequence of having these chemicals in our blood might be, there are concerns about possible effects on the endocrine system. It's already clear, however, that these chemicals are harmful to ocean life. In fact, just this year, Hawaii banned the sale of chemical-based sunscreens in an effort to protect their coral reefs. In fact, the amount of chemicals that can be absorbed from sunscreen far surpasses the threshold that would require the manufacturers to do additional safety testing. But because sunscreens had been approved for sale long before those particular rules were established, they've been given a bit of a pass. After these studies, Documenting the rates of absorption, the FDA did go to the manufacturers and ask them to do additional safety testing, but they've allowed these products to remain on the market for the time being. In the fallout from all of this, it's not surprising that there's been a lot of interest in more natural sunscreens. Some in the quote-unquote natural beauty industry have advocated the use of extra virgin coconut or olive oil as a natural sunscreen. And in fact, these oils do have some capacity to filter UV rays. One study calculated an SPF rating of about seven for both olive and coconut oil. Lavender and almond oil had an SPF closer to five, but the recommended level of protection is 30. And this study also only measured protection against UVB rays. Subsequent research that looked at both UVA and UVB rays estimated that the level of UV protection from these natural plant oils was actually far lower than that. So simply basting yourself in olive oil is not sufficient to protect your skin. But what about these nutritional supplements that claim to protect your skin from the inside? Certain nutrients, including vitamin C, E, and various carotenoids, do appear to reduce or repair some of the cellular damage that's caused by sun exposure. And let this be yet another great reason to include a broad range of colorful fruits and vegetables in your diet. The antioxidants that they contain may help keep your skin healthy and youthful. 
And there are also some plant compounds that have been found to offer modest protection against ultraviolet damage when taken as an oral supplement, including one from cocoa and another from a specific fern found in Central and South America. Although these supplements could be used in conjunction with an effective topical sunscreen, they would definitely not replace it. As I said, clothing and hats can provide a very effective shield against the sun. All cloth will give you some degree of protection, but you can buy clothes that have SPF ratings, many of them 30, 50, 70, or higher. And those will be great choices if you're going to be out in direct sunlight for extended periods of time. But for skin that you either can't or just don't want to cover up, mineral-based sunscreens that include zinc oxide or titanium dioxide provide very effective protection from the sun's harmful rays, and they don't have the same safety concerns as the chemical-based sunscreens. And you want to be sure to apply them to all exposed skin and reapply them every few hours, especially if you're swimming or sweating. And finally, keep in mind that an effective sunscreen would also hinder the natural formation of vitamin D in your skin. And some have questioned whether overzealous use of sunscreen could lead to vitamin D deficiency. Well, we do get some vitamin D from our diet. Oily fish and eggs are natural sources of vitamin D. Cereal, cow's milk, and some non-dairy alternatives are often fortified with vitamin D. And vitamin D supplements are also an option, especially during the winter months when the sun is just not strong enough to stimulate vitamin D production in the sun in large parts of the world. During the sunnier months, however, you could meet your vitamin D requirements from just a few minutes of unprotected sun exposure without undue risk of sun damage. But the exact amount, the exact length of time varies a lot according to the time of year, your skin tone, your location, the weather, what surface you're standing on, even the amount of smog in your location. Researchers at the Norwegian Institute of Air Research have put together a fun little calculator that will estimate how long you'd need to be out in the sun under various conditions to get your daily dose. For example, standing in my backyard in Baltimore, Maryland at noon on a sunny day in May, it would take me 25 minutes to get a sunburn, but only seven minutes to get my dose of vitamin D. After my seven minutes are up, however, I'll be applying a mineral-based sunscreen to any exposed skin, and then I'll make a big salad for lunch. So here's the bottom line on natural sunscreens. Although certain plant oils do have UV filtering properties, they do not provide sufficient protection on their own. Similarly, some supplements have been shown to reduce or repair cellular damage from sun exposure, but they also do not provide sufficient protection on their own. Studies have shown that the UV filtering chemicals used in many sunscreen products are absorbed into the body, and this may be a concern. And so mineral sunscreens made from zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are the safest topical sunscreens, and they're also highly effective. You'll find a transcript to today's show, including a link to the vitamin D sunlight calculator on our website at quickanddirtytips.com, where you can also send me an email or sign up for my newsletter. If you enjoy the Nutrition Diva podcast, I'd love it if you would give it a rating or a review in whatever app you listen to your podcasts in. And while you have your podcasting app open, check out my other podcast with Brock Armstrong. It's called The Change Academy, and we talk all about the science of creating sustainable behavior change. The Nutrition Diva show is written and researched by me. It's edited by Beata Santora. Our producer is Nathan Sems. And our team at Macmillan Audio also includes Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, our intern Claire Freeman, and our director Kathy Doyle. Thanks for listening and remember to eat something good for me.